What's up, YT? Waste of Space here. While scrolling on X this past week, I came across a few posts discussing the next live-action Star Wars film set to be directed by a Pakistani-Canadian woman named Sharmeen Obeid Chinoy, a proud feminist activist and former journalist largely known for her feminist documentaries. They also want you to know she's the first woman and person of color to take on such a role. With her body of work focusing on feminism and past interviews showing Obey Chinoy, saying she gets enjoyment from making men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> Many of the posts and comments I read talked about how the film is destined to be another failure and a huge flop at the box office for Disney. And to be fair, with the many recent Disney box office letdowns, for reasons no one knows, Put a chick in it! Make her gay! I don't think those assumptions are out of line. Now, I don't want to speculate on how the film will perform at the box office. It might be good or it might not. If I was a betting man, I'd probably lean toward the latter. But what I do want to focus on is the comments she made when being interviewed by CNN about her new opportunity to direct the new Star Wars film. You know, I'm very thrilled about the project because I think um, what we are about to create is something very special. And we're in 2024 now. And I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. What bothers me about that comment is that, first of all, she's not the first woman to shape a story in Star Wars. She's not even the first woman to direct a live action Star Wars story. That would be Deborah Chow, who directed a couple episodes of The Mandalorian, which has arguably been one of the few gems to come out of all of the recent Star Wars content produced under Kathleen Kennedy's leadership. Put a chick in it! Make her gay! It is true that Obey Chinoy will be the first woman to direct a Star Wars live-action film, which, for better or worse, is a fact they won't let you soon forget. She's also the first woman and the first person of color to direct a Star Wars film. It's set to be released in 2026. You can say that the force is strong with this one. But her comment wasn't about that fact. If you're going to say you're the first woman to shape a story in the Star Wars universe, wouldn't you maybe want to confirm your statement is true before you say it? This reminds me of Jennifer Lawrence's comments back in 2022, which to be fair was way more egregious. Regarding her role in Hunger Games, Lawrence said, quote, I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, Nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie because it wouldn't work. Because we were told girls and boys can both identify with a male lead, but boys cannot identify with a female lead. End quote. I mean, come on, are you serious? Sigourney Weaver in the Alien films, Angelina Jolie in the Tomb Raider films, Angelina Jolie in Salt, Uma Thurman in Kill Bill Volume 1 and Volume 2, just to name a few. But you don't even need to be a film buff to understand how absurd that comment is. How can you be in the entertainment business and say stuff like this? It's hard to believe, but here we are. Back to Star Wars. Just a little bit of research, and I learned about Lee Brackett. She was a science fiction writer and was known as the queen of space opera. George Lucas asked Lee to write the screenplay for a sequel, which became The Empire Strikes Back. Unfortunately, she passed away well before the film was ever finished, but she did complete the initial draft George wanted. And although her script was rewritten and tweaked, John Savidra of the website Den of Geek wrote the following, quote, Most importantly, you see that Brackett's draft, while definitely in need of a rewrite and several tweaks, holds all of the big moments we'd eventually see on screen. We still get a version of the Battle of Hoth, a much more ridiculous one, the wise words of an old Jedi master, the excitement of zooming through a deadly asteroid field, a love triangle, a much more overt one, a majestic city in the clouds, unexpected betrayals, and the climactic duel between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader that we would reenact on playgrounds for years to come. End quote. To me, that sounds like shaping a story. Also, for like the last decade, Kathleen Kennedy has been heavily involved in shaping the Star Wars universe, Although not for the better, many would say. So you don't even need to go that far back in time to see what she is saying is completely false. My point here is that women have been instrumental in shaping the Star Wars universe for a while, and mostly for the better. Their roles have spanned from acting to writing, producing, and directing, contributing significantly to the franchise's success. So it's pretty ironic when someone comes along claiming to be a trailblazing feminist in a field where many women have already left their mark. It gives the impression they're more interested in skewing the perception of history 
to serve self-centered narratives rather than celebrate the achievements of the women who came before them. Maybe if they just put a chick in it, make her gay, things will work out. I'm Waste of Space. Make sure to like and subscribe. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.